So I'd just like to apologize uh, for not uploading in the last, I think, almost three months. Um, I've been sick, I've had work, I've had uni, um, but luckily my uni semester is finishing um, as of maybe two or three weeks from now, so my exams will be over and I'll be able to get straight back into making tutorials for you guys, so make sure to join my Discord if you haven't. I'll leave a link in the description, okay? We're gonna be fixing the doors today, so the first thing I wanna do is change the way we get into new rooms. Let's have a look. So if we go into our basic basement, okay? Have a look, we have our left door, so that's it. We wanna add some code into this. So I'm gonna go into my door. So I'm gonna create a new void within my door. Okay, so I'm going to call void on trigger enter 2D. Okay, this is going to be, we're going to take in a collider and I'm going to call it other. Okay, and we're going to check if our other dot tag is equal to player. Okay, so if we have a player, then we're going to switch based on the door type. If the door type is a bottom door, what we want to do, whoops, just before we break, awesome. So in here, we want to grab our player, but we don't actually have a reference to the player. So what we can do is we can go private void start okay make sure you capitalize that and we can have a variable player is going to be player is going to be equal to um, game object dot find game oops, find game object with tag okay so we're going to find our player I'm going to set it equal to that variable. We also need to reference the variable up here. So we can have a private game object of type player. Awesome. So player.transform.position is going to equal to a new vector2. And we're going to grab the transform position. Oops. Transform.position.x. Okay of our door. For the y we want it to be transform.position.y minus a we could have like a width offset. So width offset so we need to define a variable for that as well. So we can have a private float width offset and maybe I'll set that to like 1.75 okay. So depending on how big your player is you will want to change this constant. That's cool. Then we can break and we're going to do the exact same thing for all of the other door types. Okay. So just like that. Okay. So here we'll have a left. Then we'll have right. And then we'll have a top. Okay. So for the left, we want to change the X position okay so we want the uh, we want the width offset here to minus and not in the y for the right we want to add to the width okay and we want to simply add for the top okay so we also need a reference to a door collider so we can have a public game object and I'll call it door collider and we'll get back to that later we'll go into the editor and assign these. Now the next thing we need to go into our room controller okay. Now the problem here is we want to be able to update our door collider we need to be able to set it active and deactive based on if there's enemies in the room so when we update our rooms we've got our enemies awesome and we can create another for each underneath 
um, our enemy controller for each, okay? And for each uh, door, door in, and we can just grab room dot get components in children door, okay? And for each door, we're going to go door dot door collider dot set active to false. We also need to check if we're not in the active room and the enemies does not equal null, that's fine. But then else the enemies are null, then we'll also make sure that they're deactive, okay? Down here, we need to change, instead of having if the enemies are null, we want to grab the enemies.length is greater than zero, okay? Because they might be defined, um, but they might have a length of zero. So, in this instance, we can grab, paste our for each in, and we actually want to set our, uh, our door colliders to true, okay? And else if our enemy length is less than or equal to zero, then for each door, we'll set it back to false. Now, one other thing we have to do is in our enemy controller, if we just have a look right here. So just before our enemies die, we need to grab our room controller dot instance and we also want to update whoop. we need to make this okay so go back to your room controller make sure your update rooms is public because we want to reference it in our enemy controller so now if we grab the instance and we grab update rooms okay if we just head back into our rooms so we've got our basic basement we need to create a door collider we can just go and create a new empty object make sure it's in here and i'll call this like left uh wall okay and we can add a box collider 2d and we'll probably make it a little bit bigger like that and make sure we set it to that and we can drag our box collider in here but we can't actually see it so add a sprite renderer and we can render a wall okay so we also need a sorting layer for the wall because we want to render the walls on top of the doors so in this uh, left wall, okay, make sure we set it to wall. So now it's on top and we'll move it so it's just a little bit bigger. In fact, we might scale the X out a little bit, okay. And then we will make sure our collider is just a little bit bigger than the door, okay? So just like that, if we remove our sprite renderer for a second, make sure that it's bigger than the physical door, okay? And make sure that it is not a trigger as well, okay? And we can enable the sprite renderer, and now we can duplicate it. So I'll call this one right wall and um, can drag it over but we can obviously want to rotate it 90 degrees so in the Z or sorry 180 degrees so just like that and then we'll remove the sprite renderer make sure we line up our collider okay and then we'll do the same for the other two.
make sure all of your sprite renderers are enabled okay so just like that so our room should look something like that but we also want to disable all of these awesome and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy these but firstly I'm gonna drag them all in so we've got left into left right into right top into top and bottom into bottom and I'm gonna repeat that for all of my other basements okay so in the empty basement um, we created our grid but there is a couple errors because we haven't actually added in an object room spawner so we can add that in but I'm actually just gonna go over to my other basement and I'm gonna go I'm gonna click the little settings button here and I'm gonna copy this component and that's just so we can simply paste the component values okay and then all we have to do is drag the grid in sweet so just again um, make sure you change your width to a value that's right for you so if I set it to 4 and we head back so an issue that could come up is that it's gonna change your position instantly so we have to create a coroutine okay so make a public I enumerator and I'll call it room coroutine okay we're gonna do a yield return new wait for seconds and we want to wait for like I don't know 0.2 seconds and then what we can do is we can call update rooms so now every time we run this we want to wait a couple just like a little bit just before so instead of calling update rooms here we can go start coroutine and then we'll go room coroutine okay and we'll also do the same we can go do instance dot start coroutine and then we can go room controller dot instance dot room coroutine in our enemy controller awesome so let's have a look we can't actually see our walls even though we can see them in the editor okay so we must check our z so we'll set that to zero okay so make sure i forgot to change the z because obviously we're in 2d okay so if you go through all of them highlight them all set your z value to zero and let's let's try it out so we've obviously got the first enemy in here now if we go down here the walls enable okay we can't can't actually get out which is pretty cool but now we'll try and kill awesome now our walls have disabled so we can now go in so there you go i think from here on out i might start a new series in the near future okay but i just sort of wanted to finish off this series in a nice place so from here you can obviously add different types of special rooms uh, you can add different types of enemies different types of items and you can really customize it how you want and yeah and i might put the code on github since a lot of you are asking for it as well so yeah if you liked the video please leave a thumbs up and i'll see you guys next time thanks